The 1989 penny value is modest, since these coins are neither in a group of scarce collectibles nor highly sought-after ones. In fact, you can count on less than $2 for most of these pieces made of zinc and copper alloy, with a few particularly beautiful exceptions. Even though these memorial pennies are not among the most attractive pieces in the series, you can find some beauty in collecting them. Besides, excellently preserved coins can become valuable in the future. Who knows? Abraham Lincoln was one of the most crucial American presidents in the U.S. history. This talented politician led the Union during the American Civil War and defeated the Confederacy. Serving as the 16th president, he succeeded in abolishing slavery. Besides, he modernized the economy and strengthened the federal government. For all these credits, he deserved to become the first genuine man to appear on one American coin, despite George Washington's views against this monarchist practice. The first Lincoln Penny's minting started in 1909. It was a way for the nation to celebrate his 100th birthday because this reputable statesman was born on February 12, 1809. Fifty years later, the U.S. Mint appropriately celebrated the assassinated president's 150th birthday by issuing coins with a redesigned reverse design. These modern coins minting started in 1959 and lasted until 2008 when Lincoln Bicentennial cents with four different reverse looks appeared in 2009. In 2010, the U.S. Mint introduced shield cents that have stayed actual until today. The 1989 penny obverse is identical to the first coins minted to honor the tragically assassinated 16th American president. His portrait occupies the central part of this coin side, surrounded by In God We Trust from Above. Besides, the simple obverse includes the date and the mint mark on the right and liberty struck on the left. The Brenner's initials, VDB, are placed at the cutoff of the Lincoln shoulder after years of intense media controversy. Unlike original pennies minted for the first 50 years, these from 1989 show the Lincoln Memorial on the reverse. Frank Gasparro was an inventive artist who decided to place a small president's statue inside the building. You can see it between central pillars in the very center of the coin. The coin rim surrounds inscriptions, United States of America, written above the memorial and one cent struck below it. There are also letters FG representing the artist's initials. They are located to the right of the monument's foot, while E. Pluribus Unum is underneath the country name. The 1989 Lincoln pennies with the memorial on the reverse are lovely round one-cent coins with a plain edge. Like other pennies minted after 1982, they contain zinc and copper in a 97.5%, 2.5% ratio. Their weight was lowered in 1982 from 0 0.1097 ounces, 3.11 g, to only 0 0.08818 ounces, 2.5 g. That was even less than the wartime steel sense mass of 0 0.09524 ounces, 2.7 g. On the other hand, 1989 pennies have kept a standard diameter of 19.05 mm, 0 0.75 inches, and a thickness of 1.52 mm, 0.05986 inches. The mint from Denver had an impressive mintage of 5,345,467,111 pennies in 1989, but it was still a lower number compared to Philadelphia. However, this difference doesn't affect these coins' value in lower grades, and you can buy one MS-60 rated red piece for 10 cents. Even better graded coins, from MS-61 to MS-67 ranking, have a relatively moderate price range from $0.12 cents to $27. On the other hand, an assessed price for MS-68 rated nickels is $275. Even though you need to set aside up to $10,000 for a penny ranked MS-69, the current record is much lower than professional estimation. One collector paid $1,024 in 2020 to get the 1989 DMS-69 Memorial Penny with beautiful red toning. 1979 Quarter Coin Value Errors List, D, S, and No Mint Mark Worth 1979 isn't a big year for the quarter, but important changes were happening in other coin denominations, for example the SBA $1, 
so some of the attention spilled over onto the quarter. Let's analyze the 1979 quarter value as we learn more about its history, mintage, and pricing. While George Washington never wanted to be on American currency, because he thought that was royal hubris, he was one of the most popular U.S. presidents. So it makes sense that he ended up on the most commonly used units of money, the 25C coin and the $1 bill. As the first U.S. president, he was placed on the $1 bill in 1869 and on the quarter coin in 1932. But since we're specifically discussing the 1979 quarter, let's talk about mint marks. Why? Because this year, the two notable varieties were the Type 1 Filled S and the Type 2 Clear S. We'll dig into that later, but let's start with a primer about Washington Quarter mint marks in general. Over the decades, the Washington Quarter has been struck in four mint branches. These are Philadelphia, no mint mark, San Francisco, S, Denver, D, and West Point, W. While the front of the coin was the same for most of its run, the words and numbers moved around to accommodate other design elements. For example, in some years the national motto In God We Trust was on the left of the coin, while in other years it moved to the right. Then in 1965, when the quarter changed from silver to clad, the mint mark moved to the front, next to Washington's ponytail. This meant users could identify the base metal coins at a glance. Later, from 1999 to 2009, the back of the coin had designs that celebrated the 50 U.S. states, Washington, D.C., and the five territories. The coins had lots of symbols and images. To make space for all the extra details, United States of America moved to the front, Liberty moved to the left, and In God We Trust moved to the right, above the mint mark. The back of the coin showed the relevant imagery and the state or territory it represented. The top of the 50 states coins showed the year it joined the Union while the bottom showed the mintage year. When describing the features of the 1979 quarter, you may come across certain technical terms. The head side is the obverse. The tail side is the reverse. The thin side is the edge. The words are mottos or legends and the images are devices. The raised border is the collar or rim. The backdrop is the field and coins themselves are struck on blanks called planches. It shows George Washington facing left with the legend Liberty above his head. The motto in God We Trust is under his chin on the lower left of the coin. The mint mark is on the lower right beside his ponytail. The designer's initials, JF for John Flanagan, are toward the right of the portrait cutoff. The mint date is at the bottom of the coin, below that signature. It shows an eagle with its wings spread out and facing down. The tips of these wings are linked by an olive wreath and the eagle is holding 13 arrows in its feet. They represent the first 13 states to join the Union. The bottom of the coin displays the denomination, quarter dollar. The top of the coin reads United States of America. Under that is E Pluribus Unum. Every quarter minted since 1932 has been a Washington quarter, so the process of grading their obverse hasn't changed. But with multiple reverse designs, you need to be extra careful when you're inspecting the back of the coin. Like all currency, 1979 quarters use the Sheldon scale and are graded from poor, PO1, to mint state, MS70. Proofs are graded as PR or PF. Before 1990, the mint mark was the final detail added to a master hub, and it was manually placed using a hand punchin. This resulted in errors like doubled, tripled, overpunched, or misaligned mint marks on dies and coins from that hub. In 1979, the mint made two types of quarters. Type 1S, only proof coins, had a filled S on the mint mark. Type 2S had a clear S. In 1979, the Philadelphia Mint made 515,708,000 quarters without any mint marks. At first glance, they're not especially expensive. On the 28th of August, 2022, an NGC-graded MS-68 sold for $1,440. But PCGs has only received one coin in this grade, so their value estimate is $10,000. Jefferson Nichols have an exciting history of over 80 years making them fascinating to collectors. Since the beginning of their production in 1938, these coins have retained most of their original design elements. 
Predictably, collectors are primarily interested in issues from an earlier period, but others can also be collectible. The 1961 nickel value depends on several factors. In addition to whether a particular specimen is from circulation or in the mint state, its availability on the coin market is also relevant. By the 19th century, there was an aversion to the possibility of real people portraits on American coins. However, that changed with the Lincoln Penny appearance at the beginning of the 20th century. President Roosevelt took office in March 1933 and initially devoted all of his attention to America's recovery from the effects of the Great Depression. Then he decided to modernize American coinage. He greatly admired Thomas Jefferson and wanted to pay tribute to him. By 1937, the administration decided his portrait to appear on the five-cent coin obverse, starting in 1938. At the beginning of 1938, the U.S. Mint announced a competition for a conceptual solution for a new nickel design. The conditions included an obverse with Jefferson's image, while the reverse implied his Monticello house. Among the 400 submitted works, Schlag's design won. Although officials had no objections to the obverse look, they didn't like the sketch for the reverse. They instructed Schlag to change the side view of Monticello and use standard Roman-style letters instead of the version he used on the models. As a result, redesigned coins remained unchanged for 80 years. Interestingly, the nickel design, accidentally or intentionally, didn't include the designer's initials. Only from 1966 can you see the letters F.S. under Jefferson's bust on the obverse. The third American president's portrait that occupies the central coin part characterizes the obverse of these nickels. The bust shows Jefferson in a high-collared coat, which was a specific way of dressing at the time. The monumental building of Monticello is on the nickel reverse. This imposing building in the state of Virginia was Jefferson's home. The word Monticello is located directly under the stairs at its entrance. The E Pluribus Unum is near the upper rim, just above Monticello. On the lower rim, you can find the inscription United States of America, while the denomination five cents is between it and the word Monticello. The 1961 Jefferson nickel is a round, plain-edged coin comprising 75% copper and nickel. It is a typical specimen of this coinage type with a thickness of 0.07677 inches, 1.95 mm, and a weight of 0.17637 ounces, 5G. Even with a diameter of 0.83504 inches, 21.21 mm, it is indistinguishable from other nickels. Nickels minted in Philadelphia didn't have the mint mark, so this is a sure way for collectors to distinguish them from other nickel types. This mint produced 73,640,100 coins in 1961. The condition significantly affects their value, and you can buy one circulated piece starting from 5 cents. Even coins in the mint state up to MS64 grade don't exceed the $1 value. However, the price almost skyrockets for coins with higher ratings, so you need to pay about $6 for MS-65 nickel, $30 for MS-66 nickel, $1,300 for MS-67 nickel. The full steps nickels have a remarkably different value. Therefore, you should set aside high sums to get one, like MS-64, $1,300 to $1, 500 MS-65, $3,000 to $3, 600 MS-66, $9,000 to $11,000. You need to set aside the highest sum of money for the 1961 PR69 D scam nickels. Their estimated value is a remarkable $2,800.